in the name of God the Beneficent, the Merciful. He it is who appointed the sun a splendor and the moon a light, and measured for her stages, that ye might know the number of the years and the reckoning. The Holy Kaaba in Mecca. The direction of prayer for Muslims throughout the world. Here, in the near proximity to Islam's holiest site, the biggest clock in the world is being constructed to offer Muslims a new time source. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah, commissioned SBG, a leading Saudi construction company, to build the Mecca clock. With the project at heart, the king has been personally involved in each step of the development. Since time immemorial, man has developed instruments to measure time with ever greater precision and accuracy. In past centuries, Muslim scientists have developed instruments such as sundials, astrolabes and mechanical clocks to improve the accuracy of time measurement and also help establish a more precise Islamic calendar. Modern science and technology requires time measurement to be extremely precise. The Mecca clock features an atomic clock and will be coordinated with other time signals throughout the world providing Muslims with a precise time signal, the Mecca time. It was S.L. Rasch, a German design firm with great experience in the holy cities, that was commissioned to lead the development team of specialist engineers and scientific experts. Over the course of nearly four years, the team produced hundreds of design studies, revising and refining every aspect of the clock tower. The design of a tower clock in Mecca is not something that you can pick up from a book. So we had to develop it in an iterative process, step by step. You do a thing, you do it again, you do it again, you do it again, until it becomes good. And the eye is no more than the brain. The first challenge that us faced is the lack of an historical model for an Islamic clock was the first challenge we encountered during the design of the Mecca clock. Our approach was to make an extensive study of all Islamic industries, such as metalwork, astrolabs and Quran ornamentation. We made a thorough study of all this and that enabled us to come up with a design approach for a clock that is modern on the one hand and yet still designed in an Islamic style on the other. A building of that prominence in this place starts to develop its own dynamism and with the grace of God it turned out to be a real thing. The large size and complexity of this project and the aim to reach the best possible quality required extensive scientific research. This included the development of new construction materials, techniques and methods. The clock tower combines innovative construction technology and authentic Islamic design. The higher management in Saudi Arabia issued new directives and initiatives in close collaboration with the team of architects and experts. The Mecca clock project truly sets a new milestone in history.
main difficulty of this project was to make a lightweight steel construction that would be able to carry this clock on top of a concrete tower. An experienced engineering firm from Stuttgart came forward with the best solution. Our task was more to extend an already existing building, which at the time hadn't quite been completed and had only partly been built. The main challenge facing us was raising a 450 meter tall high-rise building to over 600 meters. We only achieved this by using a lightweight construction. We took the Eiffel Tower as an example. The special feature of the Eiffel Tower is how it's designed according to the flow of forces. As forces increase, so does the size of the base. The idea was basically to develop a supporting structure in which forces flow directly from top to bottom. The weight of the load-bearing steel structure is around 12,000 tons. That's around 2,000 tons more than the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower allows wind to pass through it, while the Mecca clock has a large surface area exposed to the wind, something the construction has to be able to cope with. You could say that the face of the Mecca clock is about 35 times bigger than that of Big Ben. And on a clock face of this size, with a perpendicular wind force of 200 kilograms per square meter, there is a total of 300 tons force acting on the face. This is roughly equivalent to the weight of 10 medium-sized trucks. This is the kind of force the clock face must be able to withstand. For this reason, extensive wind testing was carried out. We want to make sure the entire tower doesn't just collapse. But this isn't all. Not only is there a clock face, but clock hands too. Each clock hand is roughly comparable to a wing of a medium-sized aeroplane. They mustn't hit the clock face. After testing, it was proven that there was no fluttering of the hands. In both studies, those in the wind tunnel and in the numerical simulations, we had to make sure that we took standard wind speeds from the geographical location of the building. The building is designed for maximum gust velocities of 250 km an hour around the spire. That is a wind that occurs once on site in Mecca, every 500 years. An experienced manufacturer from Turkey was chosen to produce the steel components for the clock tower. Some 140,000 unique steel components have been prefabricated and welded together to make up the 14,000 distinct elements that we are going to install on site. The fabrication output at the fabrication shop has been up to 1,000 ton per month with about 200 people directly involved in the execution. These elements, and in particular, their weight and size, have to be optimized in such a way that you are able to transport them and install them at elevation with millimeters of tolerance. At heights of up to 600 meters above ground, the steel was rigged and welded. Apart its location and height, I believe the welding intensity is unique about Mecca Tower project. Altogether, along with 45,000 bolts for connecting these elements together, more than 100 tons of welding material and 80 certified welders have been used on site. Seven tower cranes were needed for lifting the parts.
The Mecca clock tower has a total weight of approximately 83,000 tons. This makes it the heaviest clock tower ever built. For the development of the clock system, a specialist manufacturer was found in southern Germany. Making the world's biggest tower clock is a unique challenge for us, and one that no manufacturer of tower clocks has ever been faced with before. This project marks a milestone for us. Never in our company's near 150-year history have we ever had to deliver something of this size and scale. The design and engineering of the world's biggest tower clock posed a unique challenge. In the early stages of planning, a traditional design was preferred, with long pronounced hands extending from the center of the clock face. The hand's huge dimensions and weight, however, raised immediate concerns. The major concern was that in stormy conditions, the hands would flutter and knock against the face of the clock. The ganz erste Vorschlag war eigentlich der, dass man den großen Zeiger über eine Achterbahn antreibt. The very first suggestion was to drive the large hand over a roller coaster. A circular track behind the clock dial then carries a vehicle that drives the hand through a slit in the clock face. We noticed that this solution had some disadvantages, most notably with dirt, abrasion and wear and tear. This was because the peripheral device was going round the track day and night. Finally, then we decided we changed the whole clock face. We make it recessed in order to reduce the wind load. Secondly, we make the clock hands very, very stiff. They are stiff like a, like a racing boat with pure carbon fiber. And on top of it, then we go to a central drive system with a much more solid mechanism. So I think it will survive any storm in Mecca. The diameter of the clock face is 42 meters, and since this totally exceeds what's normal, new cogwheels had to be produced. The material is a special bronze that has very high strength, excellent gliding properties, and very little wear and tear. This is important when it comes to the operational lifespan of each part. The clock drive is the biggest and heaviest in the world. This unique mechanism weighs over 21 tons. The minute and hour hand are driven by separate drive units. The next stage of development was to produce a pair of rigid clock hands. The clock hands presented us with a particular challenge because they're very long slender structures which are relatively highly loaded by the wind loading. In this case we chose to use carbon prepreg. Prepreg is a material where the resin and the reinforcements are pre-combined in the factory. The benefits of using these materials in the Mecha clock tower are that we can get a very accurate reproduction of complex shapes by moulding the facade panels. Uh, we also have a very good strength and stiffness to weight compared to traditional materials, so this reduces the weight of the facade itself. The clock hands, which are the highest loaded parts on the whole building, are built in carbon fibre pre -break. The same material is used at Formula One uh, uh, in the aeronautical industry. For me, it's the ultimate high-tech material. The 
unit hand is 23 meter long and 3 meter wide and it's built like an 80 foot racing yard. We use 2000 kilograms of carbon fiber on each of the clock hands. The biggest challenge for us was the Hilal. It's a monocoque structure, self-supportive structure, 25 meter wide. It is built completely without any steel work. It has a composite shell cladded with gold mosaic and bulkheads and frames inside which carry the load. Upon completion, the Crescent will house an office space and a prayer room, the highest usable space inside a building. The complexity of the whole design with the combination of the composite panels, the mosaic tiles and the LED tubes all came together to give us quite a challenge to be able to produce a structure that would meet the requirements of the design and also live up to the aesthetic vision of the architects. A quarter of one clock face was set up and successfully tested over the course of several months. The unique thing about this project is, of course, the size of the clock. But it's also a matter of how it affects people from a far distance. Visibility by both day and night was required. Each of these is very different. To achieve the best legibility, a team of specialists conducted a live study testing the combination of lighting technology, materials and colours. The question arose immediately. Should the background be dark? Should the clock hands be bright? It's also a question of aesthetics. Theoretical studies of Christian Badenbach showed that the best readability in the day is black and white, and the best readability in the night is green and white, which was different than what we had expected. The only idea coming was to equip the whole clock with LEDs. New light sources like LEDs have very high luminance, 60 million candles per square meter. In total, approximately 2 million specially developed LED light fixtures were produced. So we expect a readability of that clock in the day and in the night from 7 to 10 kilometers. Visually speaking, the realization of the clock in Mecca was a special task and one that cannot be compared to any of my other projects. It's quite simply special. You could say the tradition of Venetian glass mosaic is over 1,000 years old. The technique we use today is the same technique my great-grandfather, Angelo Orsoni, developed all those years ago. It's safe to say that the Orsoni brand is an exclusive and completely unique product. For centuries, this gold mosaic has been manually produced in small quantities by master craftsmen. In order to fabricate the required 13,000 square meters of gold tiles in one year, roughly the area of two soccer fields, this manual process had to be mechanized. 
This is how we came to develop an automatic production system, which allowed us to deliver the supplies for the clock tower. Initially, we had to deal with problems concerning the light in Mecca and the height of the actual building. Eine ganz wichtige Eigenschaft für die Langlebigkeit von Außenverkleidung. Resistance to UV radiation and particularly to shorter ultraviolet wavelengths is important for the lifespan of the exterior paneling. Materials like ceramic are exceptionally resistant because they're composed like the Earth's crust and have a resistance of millions of years. To make the bond between the two glass layers stronger, we also had to invent a new alloy for the white gold mosaic. So we decided to use a platinum alloy rather than an alloy of gold and silver. We produced around 12,000 square meters of gold mosaic for the Mecca clock tower project. I must say it was the largest gold mosaic order ever placed in our sector. La ragione per cui il loro mosaico è così solido è dato da due there are two important factors that make gold mosaic so resistant and solid. One is the composition of the two glass layers, a thin layer and a thick layer, which enclose the gold leaf. The second is the mystery and magic that surrounds the production process. In total, the ornate facade of the Mecca clock is covered with 93 million colored glass mosaic tiles. The fabrication of components in different parts of the world made transportation and installation a major design constraint. Logistics was one of the major works and challenges of the King Abdulaziz Endowment Project. The clock tower was particularly challenging because of the scale of the project and its location next to the Haram. The project consists of two elements, the concrete works and the steel works. 
Together, they are approximately 600 meters high. Studies were made to find out how to undertake the installation works of the clock tower project. We installed a very large platform in the middle of the clock tower. The steel parts were placed on the platform and then lifted to the top of the tower by the upper crane. With the experience of SPG and the logistics team, this stage was successful. The Saudi Bin Laden Group has a special high-rise building department, which specializes in both steel and concrete constructions. We've applied all this experience in the Mecca Clock project. There's no other project in the world that was carried out on a scale of this kind, to such a high standard and also within such a limited space of time. The materials used in the project are, to the most part, non-flammable and non-toxic. This was also a unique aspect during the construction of the Mecca Clock project. One of the main issues the Saudi Bin Laden Group was much concerned with during construction was the issue of life safety. We assembled a special team of firefighters and equipment who are available 24 hours a day. We allocated this team a special lift to reach any area affected. What's more, this project is located in Mecca and in the vicinity of the Holy Mosque. Peak occasions, such as prayer times, the Hajj and Umrah, the latter of which is all year round, makes execution under such circumstances challenging. As the manager of the Mecca Clock project, my task was to coordinate with the designers and to follow the design plan and the construction phases in order to complete the work on time and to the required quality. We, as Muslim engineers, were particularly proud to manage this unique project. Companies from Europe, Arab countries and Turkey were under our management. Coordination with the different authorities in Mecca, including the civil defense, the police, traffic departments and the Mecca municipality, all contributed to the success of the project. All four drive units were successfully installed in their final location. Each section had to be installed with millimetre precision. The design of the clock face uses traditional Islamic features. The critical feature of really all the elements, and uh, in, I'll speak directly to the floral elements, it was that they should be clearly read from a very great distance, from the ground level. And this is such a very tall tower that the, that the scale of the ornament had to be really quite massive. 
The other critical feature of the design was the form of the relief, and this also took quite a lot of trial and error and testing uh, to finally come up with a relief form that was legible from 15 meters or greater, as well as had visual interest up close, because in some locations of the domes you can also see them close up, so it had to work both close up and far away. We have used a technique that has been extensively used at various levels in Islamic architecture. This means when I get closer to a building, I see more details, which I couldn't see from afar. Using this effect, Arabic architecture can combine splendor and simplicity. The most striking example of this is the Holy Kaaba. The Holy Kaaba has a very simple cubic shape. More details appear the closer you get to the Holy Kaaba. This is the principle we have tried to apply in the design of the Mecca clock. F. Daludin is one of the best calligraphers in the Arabic and Islamic world. He has the flexibility required to transfer Arabic calligraphy from paper onto a building of this size. We use the Kufic and Thuluth styles because these two calligraphic styles are widespread throughout the Islamic world. The world's largest written takbir, the phrase Allah is great, is visible on the panels above the clock. The letter Alif is more than 23 meters long. Five hundred meters above the ground, specially trained workers combat strong winds to maneuver the clock hands into position. Total, the front and back facades of the Mecca clock measure 83 meters in height and 67 meters in width. At a total weight of 107 tons, some of the Crescent's largest sections push the lifting capacity of the cranes to the limit. A specially developed loudspeaker system broadcasts the call to prayer five times a day over a distance of seven kilometers. Ashha 
هذا الدين جاء إلى هذه الأمة فأطلق عقلها لكي تتأمل في ملكوت الله عز وجل. The Holy Quran invites people to reflect on the wonders of the universe and the wonders within themselves. Following this teaching, Muslims began using visual sightings of the celestial bodies for the purpose of measuring time. Gradually, this practice developed into new sciences. Sky maps and astronomical tables were used to help perform moon sightings and to track the position of the sun in the sky with greater accuracy. Muslims kept developing these forms of science and, in doing so, introduced them to humanity. Science developed further during this era until we reached a highly accurate time measurement with a new atomic clock. This was all bestowed upon the Muslim Ummah by God, because religion and science belong side by side. The second in atomic time is defined as a certain number of multiples of period of radiation uh, that is resonant with a cesium atom. And when the new uh, atomic definition of time was introduced in 1967, of course one tried to uh, that the new definition matches the old one and this is uh, what gave rise to this uh, number of cesium oscillations that defines the duration of one second. Every cesium atom, uh, no ever when and where in the universe it is uh, observed, will oscillate at the same frequency and this is the principle behind the atomic clocks. 50 time institutes worldwide use the latest cesium atomic clocks to generate a single time signal, the Universal Time Coordinated, or UTC. UTC is used as a universal time standard and is considered as today's world time. The Mecca Time Institute intends to be part of the UTC network. It is the first and only time institute serving the scientific community while also providing services to Muslims throughout the world. It will generate its own time signal, the Mecca time. Throughout history, minarets such as the one at the famous Umayyad Mosque in Damascus have been equipped with beacon lights to signify the start of prayer. On the Mecca clock, 21,000 sparkling lights illuminate the top of the tower. They are visible both day and night from distances of up to 30 kilometers. They help the hearing impaired and those at a great distance from the mosque. During significant Islamic occasions, such as the beginning of the Hijri months and during holidays, 40 beacon lights will project beams more than 10 kilometers into the sky.
Mecca is the heart and the direction of prayer for Muslims. It is the place to which the hearts of all believers yearn. All the religious acts of this Ummah are related to time. Our prayers, Hajj, Zakat and all the actions in our lives are performed at specific times. This clock, the Mecca clock, will be a way of determining prayer times for the Islamic world and the entire world at large. It will also help achieve a unified Muslim community that shares the same devotions, feelings and one that refers to the same lunar calendar. The Mecca clock has become a minaret for the entire city and its surrounding area. It is a modern milestone of civilization and something that we can feel proud of. من الحرمين الشريفين الملك عبد الله بن عبد العزيز مشروع ساعة مكة المكرمة ويستمر على تنفيذ أربع ساعات في الجهات الأربع للبرج. After four years of realization, the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz, inaugurated the Mecca clock tower and the King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Center for Crescent Observation and Astronomy. He also officially established the Mecca time. The Mecca clock is one of the most important construction and technological projects undertaken this century. It symbolizes the harmony of science and religion and stands as a profound statement of human endeavor. It also represents the enduring legacy of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz, to the Saudi people and to the entire Muslim world.